Okay, so welcome to the rock tour. So we are going to create this ridiculously cool looking rock material. And the really cool thing about this is that you can customize it like this. So you can create completely unique and random shapes. And we're also going to bring in an HDRI to light up a scene. And we're going to create a rock shape. And we're also going to use um, Bump to just uh, create this really cool looking flat surface like this. So just a bunch of rocky stuff. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to set up is our light. So if you jump into this site, the polyhaven.com, you probably heard about it a thousand times. But if you haven't, this is completely free. So you can just search for this name here and go to the HDRI section. And from here, we want to make sure that uh, our HDRI comes with the highest possible resolution. So go 16 or 20K. I'm going to use 20K and make sure this one is set to HDR and then you can just uh, download. So when that is done, we can jump back into Blender. And by the way, if you're using another light information, this material probably gonna look really cool, no matter what, because the material here is just completely insane. So um, let's change this into the shader editor and change this from object in into world. And we're just gonna create a basic setup for this HDRI environment. It is also a really good setup. So let's just go shift A and go environment texture. And we're just gonna open up and locate our folder. And bring it in like that. So this may take a second or two depending on the resolution of this um, HDRI. So there we go. So now we can just connect this from the color and into the color of the background. So now if I change the mode here from um, into render mode, we can see that we have our HDRI world. So that is great, but we want it to be a little bit more crisp in the color. And a nice node to bring in is always this um, RGB curves node. So with this node here, you can bring in the contrast. So if you just drag this in like that and drop it, you can see that you now have a way crisper and cooler background. You can also play around with the strength here. And um, we also need this node wrangler Thing. So just uh, click on the node and go Control and T. If you don't have this add-on, just go Edit Preferences, Add-ons, and type in Node Wrangler. And check this box here, and also check this box for auto save. So this is very useful if you're going to do some animations with um, um, HDRI as a background. Then you can just rotate this world here around like that and just move it so this is this here is the basic setup for using an hdri and um, yeah let's jump into the next part okay so let's create the shape of the rock and we're going to do it in such a way that we can just go and create infinite different shapes so this is just a nice technique to know. So let's just select the object and then go to add modifier and then go to generate and then we want to bring in a subdivision surface. So now we can set this to either four or five like that and we need one more modifier. So we're going to go down to deform and then we're going to go to this place and then we're going to click on this new and we are going to click this weird icon here and then we're going to change this from image or movie and into clouds like that so this doesn't have a rocky shape 
or maybe it does because all the rocks comes in different shapes so um, but what you can do here is um, go down to the size and just play around with this um, size finger and if you hold down shift it's gonna move a little bit slow there so you're gonna get some more control so I think something like that is nice and from here we can go into the back into the modifier properties so click on that and make sure that you select this icon here so as you have one icon here and just select this icon here as well so now if you jump into edit mode we can just um, grab a vertice and then just um, drag this the way we want so let me try to do that one more time here so you get the main ideas so you can just play around with these uh, vertices here and just uh, customize this uh, rug just the way that you want so maybe something like that and when you're done you can just go shade smooth and you can also just apply these modifiers so um, that is a way to create a nice shape of the rug so let's go to the next part okay so let's create this ridiculously cool looking rock material onto the rocky shape that we created and since we are playing around with blender 4.2 i'm going to show you how to do this with bump and also with displacement and if you have no clue what i'm talking about that is completely fine i will show you as we go so uh, let's change this into the um, shader editor and then make sure this is set to object and here we can just click new like that so the first um, node that we are going to bring in is a bump node so just go shift a and search for bump and then we're going to connect the normal into the normal and we also going to need a color ramp you can just bring this black value a little bit in and connect the color into the base color of this principal DSDF. And then we're going to need a noise texture node. So the thing is with this material here, this will go get better and better as further we go into this last part here. So um, try to stick with me all the way to the end and you will not regret it. So here we can just connect the noise texture into the color ramp and also into the height of the bump. So it takes a little bit of time here in this uh, Blender 4.2. Uh, but if you go down to this material properties here, so click on that and scroll all the way down. And here we want to change this uh, displacement. Since we are gonna use bump and also displacement, we can change this to displacement and bump like that and bump this is pretty much a node that just creates an illusion of depth into the material and a displacement actually creates real depth into the material so the next um, little node that we are going to bring in here is another noise texture node yeah, so we can just duplicate this one here. So just go Shift D and duplicate. And we're going to connect the factor into the scale. So still this just looks like uh, some plastic thing. But if we go down here to this uh, first noise texture node and bring up the detail. We can see that we are getting some um, interesting stuff and if you also yeah if you're gonna go for a more sci-fi look this is probably what you want but since we are creating a rock we also want to bring the detail up of this um, second noise texture so you can see the change here right so pretty cool stuff and we can also bring down this white value a little bit make it a little bit more gray maybe bring it back a little bit in to something like that 
And now if we use the scale of this uh, second noise texture, we can just create the, yeah, pretty much infinite uh, different looks onto this rock here. So I'm just going to go for something like that. And this already looks pretty cool. But um, as I told you, we're going to make it uh, cooler as we go. But first, I'm just going to bring in a plane here so I can show it to you on a plane as well. And if I just click on the plane and then click on the object and go control and L, we can link the material like that. So now you can see how it looks onto this plane as well. So um, the next uh, step here is to start get going with this um, displacement. We can also, before we do that, bring in a sun and just uh, see how this rock reflects onto our, our sun here. So I'm just going to set the strength to 100. Now this looks actually way better so uh, maybe you can go down to 50 something like that yeah okay so let's see if we can get this rock to become even cooler than it already is so if you go shift it here and bring in a displacement node and we might want to subdivide this mesh one more time. Um, and I also want this object here, the material to be separated from this uh, plane here. So I'm just going to click this icon here. So now this material here will stand alone. So let's um, connect the displacement into the, the displacement and the factor of the first noise texture into the height of the displacement there. It's a little bit buggy experience with Blender 4.2 and of course my rock here became completely invisible but if I uh, move this color ramp like that you can see it went back into existence so that's great so now we have this really dense and interesting look and um, if we go in here into the uh, displacement and use the scale we can make this even more bumpy if we want but i actually think this works better with a plane so i'm just going to do that real quick and show you I'm just going to connect this displacement into the output and the factor into the height and there we go and I might yeah and also need to subdivide this so I'm going to go into edit mode subdivide times like that and now we're getting somewhere so as you can see we now have a really cool looking rocky uh, surface and also this floating rock here on the top so it's a lot of possibilities here with playing around with this material and this displacement in the blender 4.2 probably just will get better now it's a little bit laggy and bumpy but you can create some really cool stuff with it so just go ahead and have a great time and um, yeah i think that is it and peace out